Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Terrell in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys why you should mix in mono. Why is it a great idea to mix in mono and pretty much go back and forth between stereo and mono when it comes to your mixes when you're listening? Let's get right to it. Okay. So first things first, I know some of you may be saying, well, how do I even get to listen in mono? Well, chances are you have some type of plugin in your DAW that is native that allows you to go back and forth between stereo and mono. Let's say for instance, that you're having trouble finding it. For instance, for me, I wound up going over here to this Isotope plugin. And basically in the Isotope uh, Ozone plugin, it basically has this button that says mono. And long story short, all it does is enables me to listen in mono. And when I press it off, I'm in stereo, mono, stereo. So what I do is I take this plugin and I bring it right on over to my master bus. And basically my entire mix is going through this plugin now so I can hear between mono and stereo. So that's how I have this set up just to preface this before we get started. So basically this plugin right here is what I'm using to go back and forth between mono. So right now, when I press bypass, it will be in stereo. When I press it, when I'm not in bypass mode, it will be in mono. So for right now, we're in mono. Okay, so let's take a listen to this signal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this in mono, and what I like to do is I like to start my mixes in mono. Basically, I'm gonna bring up the levels, and I'm going to explain this to you, don't worry. I'm gonna start bringing up faders, and I'm gonna be getting levels in mono. I'm gonna be trying to get a level mix in mono. Check this out. Me and my ex were toxic, we were super sick. That's why we stayed up undercover, so bad ridden. Yeah, it was so contagious that my mama knew. She looked at me like, who are you? Get away from me. Yeah, now back to this bed that we living on. Yeah, it's the only place that we could get along. Can't call the homies to chill with us. It take a lot to deal with us. So they just leave us alone. Man, this is crazy. Okay, so now this is the mix in mono. So watch this. I'm going to go back and forth and bypass this back and forth so you can hear it in stereo and in mono. Check this out. Me and my ex were toxic. We were super sick. That's why we stayed up undercover so bedridden. Yeah, it was so contagious that my mama knew. She looked at me like, who are you? Get away from me. Yeah, now back to this bed that we live in now. Yeah, it's the only place that we could get along. Okay, so I got a great level mix. This is an unmixed record, but I got a great level mix in mono. And when I play it in stereo, it sounds great. Now, why should you be mixing in mono and why should you be going back and forth to understand or to better your mixes? Well, here's the thing. When you're mixing in stereo, you're basically hearing your sound source through this perspective, basically a left to right, a mid and a side. You're hearing this relationship. Now, when you mix in mono, you're hearing it in a collapsed version. All of the instruments, all of the sound sources are basically on top of each other, and you're kind of hearing it like this. Basically, you can hear the difference between the quieter sound and the louder sound. So you're hearing it like this for the most part. You're hearing it in this perspective because it's collapsed. Now, when it's collapsed in mono, think about it like this. All of those signals are collapsed and clashing on top of each other. And now you have a chance to figure out what is clashing now that they're all on top of each other. Now, if you can clean these instruments and sound sources up, uh, that are all on top of each other in one place and clean them to make space for each of them while they're all on top of each other, guess what's gonna happen when you bust them out the stereo? It's gonna sound awesome, why? Because now you've cleaned up the frequencies, you've put the right levels as far as the volume and stuff like that, you know where the kick should be, the snare, and now when you bring all that stuff out, now you got all this space to work with. So it's kinda like, work in this completely small, small box. And if you can work in this small box and get it tight and get it correct, when you bring it out to go play, it's gonna sound amazing. It's gonna have all the room in the world because now it already knows. That piano over there already said, well, I already know that I'm not clashing with that guitar over there because I, when we were on top of each other, basically I was already clean. You move things out the way. So that's why you should mix in mono because now what happens is all the stuff that is clashing truly is going to be shown when you have it in mono. Now, I'm gonna show you an example of this right quick. Uh, I'm gonna exaggerate this. Now, I have this relationship between uh, this instrument and my vocal. Now, it's not too much in the way, but if you listen to it, uh, some parts can feel like maybe I can get this a little better as far as uh, the relationship between them. So what I'll do is I'll put them in mono and I'll try to figure out a way that can make both of them live together. So check this out. 
So that's on. Let's put our mono back on. We're in mono again. And listen to this relationship. Me and my ex were toxic. We were super sick. That's why we stayed up undercover, so bedridden. Yeah, it was so contagious that my mama knew. She looked at me like, who are you? Get away from me. Yeah, now. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, although it's not it's not clashing too much with the vocal. Let's see if we can get it to sound even better with the relationship in the vocal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right on over to the sound effect. I'm gonna get an EQ. Any EQ will suffice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to carve out some frequencies in that uh, synth sound to see that it, whatever I carve out the vocal will have some more space and feel like they're not competing for a spot. So. My philosophy is I know that the predominant frequencies in my vocal is in that mid range, like that 800 to like 2K range. There's a lot of that. So what I'm thinking to myself is I'll probably take out some of that range in the instrument to make room for more of the vocal. Let's see if it works. Check this out. Me and my ex were toxic. We were super sick. That's why we stayed up undercover, so bedridden. Yeah, it was so contagious that my mama knew. She looked at me like, who are you? Get away from me. Yeah, now back to So I hear a difference and I hear the relationship have, has gotten better between the two. Listen closely, I'm gonna bypass back and forth. Please listen in headphones or, or in actual studio monitors. Check this out. Me and my ex were toxic, we were super sick. That's why we stayed up undercover, so bedridden. Yeah, it was so contagious that my mama knew. She looked at me like, who are you? Get away from me. Yeah, now back to this bed that we- It feels like the instrument is un- Now the instrument and the vocal have a better relationship and it's a little bit more unbothered. Now let's bypass this and go back into stereo. Check this out now. Me and my ex were toxic. We were super sick. That's why we stayed up undercover, so bedridden. Yeah, it was so contagious that my mama knew. She looked at me like, who are you? Get away from me. Yeah, now back to this bed that we live in now. Yeah, it's the only place that we could get along. Can't call the homies to chill with us. So when I have this EQ engaged and basically carving out a little bit of that 1,000 hertz range, I feel like the vocal has a little bit more space to, to live and breathe. And I really wouldn't have figured that out unless I went into mono. And me going into mono basically helped me realize, wow, there's a little bit of space that needs to be given to that vocal in order for both of them to live. So I'll go to the instrument. And the reason why I move over to the instrument is because the vocal is more of a focal in my mixes. Mostly in modern day music, your vocal is probably going to be the main thing that you want to captivate the audience. So what do I do? I go to my instrument or my other sound sources to make room. Now, granted, you can go to the vocal and make room. But for this particular one, I wanted to go to my instrument, carve out a little bit of that space and get that. And I wouldn't have figured that out unless I put the mix down into mono to figure it out. So this is why it's so important and why you should probably be mixing in mono from time to time. Pop back and forth. See what's clashing when you collapse that mix on top of each other and you'll know exactly where that snare should hit, where that kick should be, where those other instruments should be. And you'll hear exactly the problems in the mix that you need to carve out, fix, and make better. So I hope that was helpful. That was my tutorial on basically why you should be mixing in mono. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you also visit helpmedevon.info for so many different goodies that we have from vocal templates and vocal chains, as well as our studio rack uh, uh, preset that we have that is incredible that I use for vocals. Uh, make sure you follow us at helpmedevon on the Instagram. And uh, once again, make sure you give us all your comments, questions, and concerns at helpmedevon at gmail.com and the comments. And until next time, you guys.